What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had another bullish day in the stock market as we continue to melt up to brand new all-time highs. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. Also, I hope you all had a great long holiday weekend filled with freedom, the same freedoms that allow you to be a bear in a bull market. So today on SPY, we went up 0.35% as we continue to march higher towards our next price target at 436. I didn't have a video update yesterday, but if you look at yesterday's price action, we did backtest the breakout of 430 as support. So anytime you break a price target and backtest that level and it acts as support, that is extremely bullish. So right now it looks very likely we're going to have no troubles getting to our next price target at 436, which will be our next level that we want to see if we're going to get a pullback from. Above 436, we still have higher price targets, but we still want to take it day by day. So right now you're looking for 436 as your next price target on SPY, and you can see the price action and the trend are still incredibly bullish. The price action is still over a positive sloping 5 EMA and we still have the full bull trend. The bullish trend is also picking up momentum as we see these moving averages creating separation like we have in the triple Qs. So our support levels to watch for are going to be 430, 427, and our 20 simple moving average which is coming up into the 426 range. We still have a gap to fill below at 424 but we're not likely going to fill that gap until the next correction which could still be quite a bit away. So everything's still looking extremely bullish on SPY and I don't see any reason to try to call a top in this bull market. I say it time and time again, but there's no reason to try to call a top and try to be a hero in a bull market. It's very likely in a bull market you can continue to extend and this is starting to look a lot like the bull rally that we had in April, which means we're not likely going to retest some of these breakout levels for another month or two. So respect the bull trend and respect the bullish price action as it continues to melt up higher, breaking through price target after price target. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we got to our next price target at 362 and that did trigger somewhat of a pullback. We did find support at our previous price target at 359, which is again a very bullish indication. Just like when SPY broke out of 430 and back tested that level as support, that's exactly what we're seeing on the triple Qs. We broke out of 359, tested our next price target in the 362 range, and then back tested support at 359 yet again. So look for a break of about 362.7 to bring us to our next price target at 367. We have a gap to fill below at 355, but again, these gaps are not likely going to get filled until the next correction. So look for support at 359, the gap fill at 355, and our previous breakout level at 353. Our 20 simple moving average is now sitting right around 349, and we continue to see this bull trend in the NASDAQ 100 marching higher. These moving averages have great bullish separation and they're all in full trend mode, so this is a very strong bull trend in the NASDAQ 100 that is not going to die easily. So again, if you're trying to short the NASDAQ right now, you're playing with fire and you're more than likely just going to add to the short squeeze to send it even higher. Don't be a bear in a bull market and if you're getting scared and you're getting defensive at these levels, just go to cash and wait for the next dip. On the Dow Jones, we went up 0.32% today and the Dow Jones is still in that full bull trend. We did find resistance at that 348 level and we're still back over that 5 EMA in that full bull trend. Our 20 simple moving average is still relatively flat, but it will start sloping to the positive direction soon and that will help push us to new all-time highs in the Dow. Look for the Dow to try to break 348 to get to our next price target at 351. Our downside support levels on the Dow will be 345 and our 20 simple moving average right around 343 and below that we have the 50 EMA at 341. Again, all three indices are in full bull trends with bullish price action, so there's no reason to be a bear right now when all three of the indices are in full bull trends. On the Russell 2000, we see a lot more weakness going down almost 1% today in the second day in a row of closing below the 50 EMA. We're losing the bullish trend that we were building up and we see the price action below the 50 EMA which is never a bullish indication. Look for the Russell 2000 to try to find support at 222 or 220 and below that we could be coming all the way back down to about 215. Upside resistance will be 226, 227 and the 20 simple moving average at 229. On ARK-K we dropped 2.34% today and ARK-K was in need of a cooldown and we did close that gap right around 126. We went beyond that gap close and we're now at the support trend line right around 124 and our 20 simple moving average is sitting here at 122. Below 122 we'd be looking for support at 119.5. Again, we still have the full bull trend on ARK-K, so this is just a pullback in a bull market. And typically when you have these full bull trends, you want to try to buy the dip off these support levels. So watch for one of these support levels to have buyers step in and reverse the downward trend and start back up into this bull market. Upside resistance levels will be 128, 130, and 135. On the VIX, we dropped 1.46% today and we still see the VIX trading below 166 .6. Again, the VIX is very low right now, which means we're more than likely seeing fear continue to leave the market which is telling us to expect brand new all-time highs. If we see the VIX getting back over 18 and then back over 20, 
that could mean the top is in and we're due for that stock market correction. So watch the VIX levels very closely because right now the VIX is still telling us to expect a bull market, but we are starting to see the VIX starting to inch up higher from the low 15s into the mid 16s. That's still completely normal volatility and has nothing to do with a stock market correction until we see the VIX getting over 20. On the dollar, we still see the full bull trend and the price action over the 5 EMA. A strong dollar is going to put a lot of downward pressure on gold and silver, so you need to watch the bull trend in the dollar very closely if you're trading gold and silver. On gold, we're still marching higher slowly but surely, and we're back over the 20 simple moving average. We'll have resistance at 1815, which is the 50 EMA, and 1829, which is our resistance level. Downside support is still 1776 and 1760. On silver, we're seeing a lot more weakness than we're seeing on gold, and we did see silver get rejected at that resistance level at 26.5. Downside support will be 25.8, and below that we have support at 25.1, with the upside resistance at 26.5 and 26.6. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 0.8%, and Bitcoin is back above that 20 simple moving average. Bitcoin is back into a consolidation, and it needs to try to break back above about 36,000 to retest our resistance level at 39,000. To the downside, we should have strong support right around 33,000 and our most critical support level at 30,000. And below 30,000, we'd be looking for support at 27,000. Remember, I'm bullish on Bitcoin as long as it stays above 30,000 because that's bullish double bottom price action. As long as Bitcoin potentially looks like it double bottomed, I want to remain bullish to see if we can break back above 39,000. If we do break below 30,000, the double bottom will look a lot less likely and we could start going back down into a bear market. But right now we don't have a bearish trend anymore and the price action is consolidating getting ready for a big move. So look for another attempt to potentially break out of 36,000 and run to 39,000 or a break back below 33,000 to retest support at 30,000. On Amazon stock we're seeing those bullish moves ever since that breakout and we are seeing Amazon moving in some serious ways. We do have a gap to fill below right around 35.12 but again this is a very impulsive rally on higher volume so there's no guarantee that we have to fill that gap. We did blast right through that price target at 35.52 and closed above our next price target at 36.55. Our next price target above is right around 37.60 and we continue to see Amazon looking very strong in this very strong full bull trend. The price action is getting a little too far overextended above the upper Bollinger Band and getting a little too far away from the 5 EMA. So it could be possible to see Amazon cooling off a little bit before we make that run up to brand new all time highs. You could look for support on Amazon stock around 36.55 and 35.52. On Tesla, we were down a little over 2.2% today and we closed right on top of the 50 EMA. We closed the gap at 659 and we went even farther to retest the 50 EMA and the 20 SMA. So right now, Tesla is in a very important situation where it needs to start bouncing off of support. Tesla is very close to having the 20 simple moving average crossing back above the 50 EMA, which means it'll be in a full bull trend. It already had the breakout of our resistance trend line, but right now we're back below the resistance trend line and we need to break out yet again. So we need to see Tesla breaking back out above 659, gaining the full bull trend and starting to blast through some of these price targets above. Our price targets are 692, 714, and 765. Our downside support levels are going to be right around 643 and below that we're looking for support at 626. Otherwise, we're coming all the way back down to 594 or lower. So watch these critical levels because Tesla is about to make a big move in either direction. So you want to see if it's going to break down and head lower or break out and head much higher. On Apple stock, we continue to see bullish price action with the strong bullish trend with Apple going up 1.8% today and closing above $144. We see huge volume on Apple stock as it continues to break out and look more and more impulsive. We did break out of our channel and we blasted into the 140s and our next resistance level will be at 145 and above 145, we're looking for a price target of 148. Remember, we have the full bull trend, but we are getting a little too far overextended. Look for possible support at 143, 142 and the gap closed right around 137. On the financial sector, we are pretty flat on the day and we're still closing below the 50 EMA. We don't have a bear trend just yet, but we would like to see the price action getting back over the 20 simple moving average if we want to see the financial sector having any hope of going back into a bull trend. Right now, financial sector are still holding up on a higher low, so we could potentially bounce from here and continue to head higher. In the situation that we continue to head lower, that will look a lot more bearish and we could see a bear trend in the financial sector. Overall, that would not be a bullish indication for the S&P 500. On the industrials, we went up 1% today, and we do see the industrials back above all the moving averages and back into a full bull trend. Overall, this is good news, and this could be a hint that the financial sector is going to follow suit. It's just a little bit lagging behind. 
So the industrials are looking really good here, and we do see a very bullish candle on today's price action. The healthcare sector continues to look bullish going up 0.63%, closing above a positive sloping 5 EMA, and it still has the very strong bull trend. So no concerns with the healthcare sector. The energy sector dropped 1.63% today in the second day in a row, closing below the 50 EMA. The energy sector is looking a lot weaker, but it is sitting near a support level. Right now, the energy sector doesn't have a trend in either direction, but overall, the energy sector is not that important in carrying the S&P 500 higher or lower because it doesn't have enough weight. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can still see the tech sector and the NASDAQ 100 doing very well, and we see a lot of strength in big blue chip names like Amazon and Apple. We should have just enough energy to push by to 436 and possibly beyond, and we still have plenty of bears trying to short a bull market, so there's always that possibility of adding the fuel to the fire and getting that short squeeze, which could lead to a blow off top. Remember, when you get a bull market this strong and you still have a lot of people trying to short the market, that's like adding fuel to the fire because eventually they will get short squeezed and that will be a short covering event that causes them to become net buyers at all time highs. So look for that potential parabolic price action and remember a blow off top is usually followed by a steep sell off. But overall, the market still looks bullish even though some sectors still look like they need a little bit of damage repair. The tech sector is more than enough to carry the way, with the tech sector being over 30% in the S&P 500. Also remember that I have my trade alert service is now live, which is called Bank Trade Alerts, and it only trades the TQQs. You get all of your buy sell alerts directly to your email and text message, so it's very simple to follow and all of the hard work is done for you. All you have to do is execute the trades yourself, and I am running a 50% off promo for your first month. You can find out all of the details in the description below. Also on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm doing intraday updates and analysis to always help you navigate this market and stay on the right side of the trade. I'm also bringing brand new trade ideas to help you crush this market. You can find out how to join the Discord by clicking on the links below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.